Now, the last time Steve Jobs took a medical leave, there was a lot of speculation about whether he would come back. He came back within six months mm -hmm. uh, and has been going fairly strong ever since. But to understand sort of the medical situation here, uh, we are happy to have Dr. Lillian Harvey, Assistant Clinical Professor of Surgery at Hofstra School of Medicine in conjunction with the North Shore LIJ Healthcare System. Uh, welcome, Lil. Yeah, folks may know her more as Dr. Mom in the chat room. Hi, Tom, Sarah, everybody. In Hi, Lillian. Thanks for, nice uh, thanks for coming on and uh, helping us understand a little bit about the situation. Now, you are not Steve Jobs' doctor. You haven't seen the patient. You don't know anything about his, his health records, right? That's correct. I know nothing that hasn't been already published beyond observations I've made looking at him in pictures that have been published and when he's had webcasts of presentations, what he but, looks like. But one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is you can help us understand about pancreatic cancer and, and what kind of risks someone would face and what this might mean. Uh, in fact, you wrote a, a blog post the last time uh, he went on medical leave back in 2009. Can you give us a little summary of what the situation might be? Sure. What first thing people have to understand, there were two different kinds of pancreatic cancer. There's the kind that Patrick Swayze had that ran in Jimmy Carter's family. This is the kind that you normally hear about. People make maybe six months after diagnosis unless they're very lucky. There's a second kind of pancreatic cancer, and it has to do with the fact that the pancreas, besides secreting digestive hormones, also makes hormones. He's got the kind of cancer that causes, that comes from the hormone secreting cells. In his case, he has a tumor called carcinoid, which causes changes in blood pressure. It can cause literally, you suddenly look like you're having a hot flash. You get a flushing reaction. Now, is that more survivable than the, the first type that you mentioned? Absolutely. 50% of people who have that kind of a diagnosis survive at least five years because normally the problem with pancreatic cancer is you don't know you've got it until it's so far advanced that there's too late to do anything about it. With the hormonal type of tumors, the hormones that are being secreted cause problems so early that they can catch this when the tumors say the size of my pinky. So it's easy to cure. Now he, he was diagnosed with this a long time ago. Uh, is he outperforming the average already? Well, he was diagnosed in 2004. He would put off surgery from, again, this was what was published. He put off surgery for a year trying to treat this with diet and with other treatments besides surgery. And he was operated on in 2005. The tumor was back by 2009 when he needed the liver transplant. So he had made his five years. Liver transplant is probably the only good treatment we have right now for people who have tumors recurring in their liver. We don't have good chemotherapy. We don't have really other ways to do it if it's spread out throughout the liver. So the answer is to remove the liver and put in a new one if you can do it. And in a pancreatic cancer patient, after you've removed the liver, uh, you know, what, what could we expect? What could cause a, a second need to leave your job? The tumor's back. And, and, and so does that mean that the liver transplant didn't work or it only worked for a, a shortened period of time in those cases? It's not that the liver transplant didn't work. It's that the tumor recurred. The criteria for doing a liver transplant in cancer patients are you can't have evidence of cancer anywhere else in your body. Because one, if you do, it's not gonna, you're not going to survive anyway. Two, the medications you have to go on to keep your body from rejecting the new liver let the cancer grow and spread. Um, it's going back. I don't know if you remember Mickey Mantle had a yeah. liver transplant. Mm -hmm. And he had it for primary liver cancer. They operate on him. They thought he was clear of cancer, put in a new liver, and tumor blossomed in his lungs and everywhere else within months, and he died because of the suppression of his immune system. When you see something like what's going on with Mr. Jobs, most likely the tumor's back. And then, and, uh, again, we, we don't know that that's true of Steve Jobs, and we don't know what's going on with him, but if that were the case, in a, in a cancer patient who's had the liver transplant, the tumor reoccurs, you know, what, what's the prognosis then? It depends if they think he's a candidate for another liver transplant. The problem you have is p part of the reason I feel that he didn't get the transplant done in California, and a lot of people made comments, why did he go to Memphis, was because not every institution will tr do liver transplants for the kind of cancer he has. Mm. There's not enough evidence out there to say that it's better than treating it medically. To be honest, we'll never get that kind of evidence. The tumor is rare enough. You'd be collecting patients for 20 years to get that kind of evidence. Gotcha. So he went to a center that says, we will do a transplant for this kind of a condition. 
if it's back and they think it's nowhere else, they could try transplanting him again. The chances are not good. It's probably going to come back again. And so then is it just uh, chemo? Uh, it would... We don't have good chemo for this. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's nothing else. What to... about radiation treatments? Same problem. We really don't have good radiation, good chemo. What you can do, depending on what's going on, is you can stick a catheter into the tumor and deposits in the liver and either cook them with microwave radiation. You can literally put in liquid hydrogen, nitrogen slush and freeze them. It's controlling the local disease. None of those are curative. What you may do is buy him to a year, two or three more years. Mm -hmm. What you're trying to do is buy time to hope that we develop something. And this, can of course, cure. is just assuming that it's not already spread somewhere else. Right, right. That's so, the big problem. Yeah. Well, if nothing else, uh, you know, all other speculation aside, uh, it definitely uh, points out the importance of cancer research and supporting cancer research and uh, all of its various forms, uh, not just pancreatic cancer. And before we let you go, uh, Lil, I want to ask one last question going away from the disease aspect of this and more of the privacy aspect of this. Uh, with most people, it wouldn't be a question. He, he's, he's, a, he's an individual who has the right to medical privacy. Because he's a head of a company, uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, he needs to talk to his investors and let them know more what's going on. He needs to make it more public so that people who are interested in buying Apple stock can know what's going on. Do you have an opinion about what should be made public and what shouldn't? I think if something's going on to the point where it's going to impair his ability to do his work, that probably needs to be at least disclosed to the SEC and probably the stockholders. Now, I will say with what he's got, He's likely to function perfectly well for quite a long time, even if they can't do anything about it. Eventually, if this is recurrent tumor in his liver, his liver will fail. He'll slip off into a coma. And that, you know, will be the preterminal event. But he could go a very long time. What's more concerning to me is the weight he's continued to lose. After the liver transplant, I'm sure the people in the chat room noticed, I kept saying, he's not gaining weight. Mm -hmm. You expect somebody with a liver transplant who's successful to have put weight back on. And I don't know if Jason's got the picture I asked him to pull up, recent picture of him. Yeah, here's one from a couple of months ago, I think. Look at him. And more important, look at his hands. Tom, pick up your hand and look at the palm of your hand. Look at the muscle pad right here. It's called the thenar eminence. Mm -hmm. It's thick and fleshy. That wow. does not go away unless you're paralyzed or you're starving. Mm -hmm. Now look at his hand. It's right. gone. I see what his you're saying, yeah. If you looked at him with shorter sleeves, you can see the, mu the bones in his arms. He's losing muscle in areas where he's presumably exercising every day. And that's a very bad sign. And he just never gained the weight back after the transplant. I mean, look at him right here. Yeah. He's got no muscles in his arm and his hands. He's lost the muscle on either side of his face here. His face is sunken in. You can't tell if he's losing his hair, which is a sign of basically being cachectic malnourished because he keeps his hair cut very short. But he does, he's never looked right after the transplant. Well, hopefully, I, I hope uh, 100% uh, for him and his family's sake that uh, everything goes well and he returns from, from medical leave as soon as possible. Uh, and, and Dr. Mom, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us and Thank help so us understand yeah. not just about Steve Jobs, but a little opportunity to understand a little bit about pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. No problem. Th glad to help you. All right. We'll see you in the chat room. Okay. Even chat, Dr. Mark. <laughs> All right. Dr. Lillian Harvey, Assistant Clinical Professor of Surgery at Hofstra School of Medicine, in conjunction with the North Shore LIJ Healthcare System.